sharding is partitioning or splitting data into parts. In this short video, I'll explain how sharding helps us design and build high performing systems. Imagine that you got a system with just one main database. Over time, your system is serving millions of requests and now your main database is starting to get overloaded and can no longer handle all these requests at once and is becoming a bottleneck with low throughput. To improve the state of database, we can vertically scale it by making it more powerful. But if you have been following my system design videos, vertical scaling is limited. So the natural next step is to scale it horizontally, meaning to add more database servers. So instead of having one database server, we will have five database servers, similar to what I mentioned in my database replication video. Instead of one replica, we can have five, 10, or even 20 replication of the main database improving the throughput of the entire system by a factor of 5, 10, and 20 respectively. However, if you have a system, say, as big as Facebook, it's not ideal or optimal to replicate this huge amount of data across a bunch of database servers. An optimal solution here is instead splitting up the data. In other words, one part of data will be stored in one database server, and another part of data will be stored in another database server, and so on and so forth. This idea of splitting up or horizontally partitioning the data is known as sharding. You split up the main database into a bunch of little databases, which are known as shards or data partitions. And by doing this, you have not only increased the throughput, but also avoided duplication of so much data. But how do we know how to split up the data and where to put certain chunks of data in what shard or what partition? When it comes to relational databases, we can split up the tables, store certain rows in some shards and other rows in other shards. So here we have a payments table where we are storing customer name, demographics and payment details. We can shard this table based on customer name. You might say any payment coming from customer whose name starts with the letter between A and F will go to shard one. Any payment from a customer whose name starts with the letter between G and I will go to shard two and so on or you might split up the payments according to the region of customers. So if a customer comes from North America, that row is stored in shard one. Or if a customer is from South Asia, that row is stored in shard two and so on. We must be extremely careful when splitting up the shards because shards can also create data hotspots where certain shards get a lot more traffic than other shards just by the nature of the data that they store. So for example, if we sharded according to the first letter of our customer name, we may have very few customers whose names start with the letter X, Y, and Z, as compared to the customers whose names start with A, B, or C. So that might not be a good sharding strategy. Same goes with the location strategy. You might have a lot more customers in US as compared to other parts of the world. So your shards in North America can become data hotspots. Whereas the shards with the payments from other parts of the world will not have much traffic. A reasonable way to split up the data here is hashing. That guarantees uniformity to determine what shard a piece of data is going to be written and read from. You can check out my video on hashing and consistent hashing in my system design playlist where I explain exactly how they can be of help in reducing data hotspots and also handling shard failures. And if you have found this video informative, please give a thumbs up and consider subscribing.